Hey everybody, welcome to the KDW7 channel. And um, today I'm going to talk about this telescope. Do a review on it. Um, it's called the Celestron Power Seeker 127EQ. And um, this is my second telescope. Um, as you can see, the other, other review I did on the, um, the 760-700 telescope, which um, I did. And this is the second review I promised everybody I was going to do. Alright. This this telescope. I'm going to start with the, with the all it came with. It came with slow motion controls. It came on the equal, a German equatorial mount. As you'll see with the weight. And this telescope is pretty much balanced. I balanced it already. If I can go ahead and show you. It's balanced. Um... It came with um, some software, some astronomy software. It comes with two eyepieces, two eyepieces, and it comes with a three times Barlow. As you can see, this eyepiece is uh, it's a little closer, but it still got a little bling bling to it. You can see it's shining. Um, it's it have eye relief on it, so that's good for that one. But this four, the four, um, the four mil doesn't have any code on it, and it's um, it's an inch and a quarter standard. Um, it came with those two pieces. Came with a nice tray for your eyepieces. Nice stand. Stand is all right. But um, like when I start my reviews, I always start with the bad part first. You know, so it's always good to get the bad parts out there first. So, the bad thing I don't like with this telescope is the lid. This lid right here, I don't know if anybody who ever had one of these telescopes, these lids are very flimsy. I mean, if you turn this telescope all the way down, or if you just simply, let me do it right here for you. If you simply do this to it, and um, <clears throat> you go ahead and loosen this screw up right here. And you know how you just, you, I, I'm still not saying that everybody does all the time. But if you just go ahead and just flip it down and it's, it comes loose, so it falls out because it's not stable. But she has some kind of, um, I put some black tape on it and it's still not working. The hole is in there. I mean, it still falls out. When I'm picking this telescope up, I'm moving around, this lid always comes off. It's a pain in the butt. But um, another thing I don't like about it too is this right here. This part at the bottom of the German equatorial mount that that connects to the stand to the equatorial mount. This part right here. I mean, there's a screw right here at the bottom. Turn this screw. This thing sometimes is hard as hell to turn. I mean, it's super super hard. I mean, you can't just not just it's hard to turn with just one hand. You know. They should have put some barbarians in this thing. I mean, I feel like I'm tearing this thing up every time I turn it. So it's hard. It's hard as hell. But um, those are the only things that I don't like about this telescope. Some of the things I do like about this telescope is this telescope has um, the diameter of the mirror is 127. Millimeters. The the focal length. I don't know if I can get this thing to focus. The focal length is one thousand millimeters. I don't know if I can see that. It's one thousand millimeters of focal length. So <clears throat> the mirror in this thing is is huge. I like the mirror. And um, back there is my primary mirror. This right here is my secondary mirror right here on this spider. Yep, so that's one of the things I like about this thing. And plus, these slow motion controls are another. I love my slow motion controls. It's great. You lock onto the target and you do your thing or whatnot. And you keep it in your sights. Yeah. The, um, another thing that's kind of like a pain in the butt is this right here, the up and down. I mean, you really got to turn this thing. This thing is heavy. You have a big ass counterweight on this side, so. You pick up the counterweight plus the telescope while you're turning this thing right here with your hand. 
I mean, it's easier sometimes, you know, to bend this tusker back here and then unscrew this right here. So I'm screwing it up and down. It's pretty going to be a whole lot faster. But sometimes you screw it too high. You screw it too high. This gets in the way and this right here gets in the way. So you turn it. It bumps into this. Bumps into this and it bumps into this up there. <coughs> yep. Other than that, it's a great telescope. I mean, I've seen all the plants with it. I've seen um, Jupiter. I've seen Venus. I've seen Mars. I've seen Saturn. Um, <coughs> you know, I see the, all the basic planets with these. You know, um, I haven't tried to see um, Neptune and Neptune and um, Uranus is too far away. I think. So um, that's about all about this telescope. So I want y'all to just go ahead and just like this video, or subscribe to it, you know, or give me a comment and let me know what else you want me to review. I'm I'm getting some new eyepieces in in a little bit. I got some um some mid to mid um me I don't know if I'm saying it right mid eyepieces coming in. That's a whole kit. Or the four the four thousand series, I'm gonna do a review on that and unboxing in the review on those when those come in. Um, right here, and this also come with a three times Barlow, too. Um, so you get all that software, three times Barlow. You get the two eye pieces, and the, um, you get the um the manual CD, and you get the um the astronomy software. It comes with this thing, and um, you can also put a little small camera right here. Just put a camera right here, so that's that's great for do um, some photography of the moon or whatever you're shooting at. You know, take a, a quick pick at it, you know, the star or something like that. But um, that's all. So thank y'all for watching, and have a wonderful day.